Hey guys, uh, if you watched my last video, you're already familiar with Snubby and Campy, the leaf spring knives that I've been working on. Okay, before we get started with today's heat treat and test break, I want to get a few things out of the way first. I feel that you guys need to know. You might be trying to find out what type of steel leaf spring is so that you can know exactly how you're supposed to heat treat it. I'm sorry to tell you folks, I know a lot of people are going to tell you that it's 5160. I've heat treated 5160 and leaf spring and it's not necessarily going to be the same material. And the ones that I have are definitely not 5160. They have different attributes, they, they heat treat differently. Um, you got to know that. Um, there's a couple of different categories of steel for knife making and well at least two that I'm going to bring out here. One is known steels, 5160, 1095, 1085, you know, um, W2, O1. They're, these are known knife steels that you can get data sheets on and, and that data is going to tell you exactly what you need to do to get the most out of that steel. Leaf spring isn't going to be like that. I'm sorry guys, it's a good steel to use, especially if you're new to the game like me. And for me, I like having material that's not that expensive, so if I screw it up real bad, at least I did invest a bunch in the material. And uh, in my situation, it's perfect. Um, but if you're trying to make money or be efficient, um, use those no knife steels. They're, they're going to be better. If you got time to do your own tests uh, because you're using mystery steel and you're not sure what it's going to do, uh, yes, leaf spring is great. I love it. But you got to know these things going into it. Don't expect it to be a known steel. It's, it's just not going to be. Even if it was from a 55 Chevy and you know that Chevy that year was using 5160 to make their leaf springs, how do you know that that was the original leaf spring? That could have been an aftermarket leaf spring and based on the research I've been doing, leaf springs are made all over the world through a variety of different manufacturers and a variety of different types of spring steel. And for all you know, that could be an aftermarket leaf spring. It's not for sure going to be 5160. So please don't count on it being 5160. I just wanted you guys to be clear on that moving forward. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey, so uh, I can't go any further without uh, doing a test to see how I'm going to properly heat treat these blades. You know, Campy and Snubby deserve a proper heat treat. Little railroad spike preheat. Ah, yeah, that's still cold water. We'll drop another spike in there. Okay, so here's the setup. I got two scrap pieces that I flattened down pretty thin in the forge right now. Pieces of leaf spring. I'm going to try to grab them both at the same time. When they get good and hot enough, bam, I'm going to clench them. Not exactly the same size but they're pretty close and uh, yeah neither one of those puppies show any signs of cracking as far as I can see but uh, well get them down to temper them back uh, let's do a quick cleanup before we uh, go to temper Alright, still warm from a basic cleanup and uh, just a slight mini bevel so it's about the same thickness as my other two are going to be as I go into heat treat. And uh, we'll take this one and we'll dump it in there at 450 for one hour and see what happens. So while the other one is uh, in the process of tempering, I'm going to take the one that has no temper whatsoever and do a quick quick hardness testing of it but if my last uh, test with leaf spring was any indication 
this should be at least 55 HRC. Definitely 100% skating the 50. Uh, the 55 is really on the line, so I guess that's about as hard as I got it last time. Um, we'll see how the uh, tempering process affects a bend test, but uh, and see what kind of final hardness we get. Okay, so here we are in my dingy, nasty basement, and uh, I didn't see a whole lot of color change in this. And I didn't see a whole lot of change in the rock wall hardness when I checked it with the file. It's still between 50 and 55. Um, I'm going to try to do a brake test and see if that did really temper back at all or not. Maybe 450 in the toaster oven isn't quite enough. Um, it's already starting slightly bent, but uh, we're going to see how far it goes. It's already maybe 2 degrees bent. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so we're starting out, I don't know, what would you call that? I'd call that about here. Let's put the camera here. I think I'd call that about what? 10 degrees already? So let's see how far we can get. Well, that's not too bad. Whoop, slid up on me. We've quite got 40. Well, we're probably past 45 now. All right, so well, I don't know. All right, finally broke. Um, that was pretty good. Actually, I'm pretty. I mean, it's not going to win any uh, competitions, but for just making knives that are pretty tough, I think you. I think that's going to flex enough. You wouldn't break that. I feel pretty good about that. I'm going to do just one more little bend, just to see if I can kink it and then get it to come back. Alright, now we're starting out almost straight up and down. Let's go about 45. And then look. Oh, it sprung back quite a bit. That's good. Spring steel, it should. All right, so we kinked it. All right, and let's kink it back. Actually, let me. All right. Now let's go back the other way. I mean, there's a lot of spring. I like it. I like it. Wants to spring back. Straightened it back up, basically a little past straight. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's going to work. We didn't lose much hardness, and uh, I think that's enough toughness as far as I'm concerned for these knives. All right, you know what? Since that piece did so good, um, and I already like that program for tempering this, I'm going to go ahead and just do a brake test on the other piece that I hadn't yet done any tempering on, just so you can see the difference and how brittle that's going to be versus what I just did. I got almost 90 degrees with that. My guess is I won't get much more than 10 with that and it'll snap, but let's see. Okay, yeah, we're starting now. I don't know, what's that? 10 degrees already? Maybe 15? Let's see how far we can get with this one. Wow, it's actually going a lot further than I thought. Oh. That made it almost 40 degrees before it snapped. Oh, but yeah, that didn't bend though. Yeah, that did not bend, really. I mean, it was springing. But yeah, we only made it about... Here, I'll, I'll set these pieces up so you can see. Okay, so I've uh, set up sample A and sample B, and at the approximate angles where they broke, uh, this is a little more acute than it actually was. It was a little, a little more open than that, but I can't get it to set up straight so you can see it if I get it to the actual... Let me try. Yeah, see, it's already wanting to fall apart. Um, so anyways, uh, that one went, I don't know, at least a good 85 degrees. That one really broke... Um, at, I don't know what you'd call that, um, maybe 10 degrees. So clearly the tempering made a difference. Now this type of temper should be a lot more consistent and easily repeatable 
compared to the torch temper that I did on the last leaf spring knife that I made. Um, leaf spring is really tough as it is anyways. It has a high degree of toughness, but I really would hate to make a knife for somebody and then end up finding out they come back later with a little chip out of the blade or the cutting edge. Uh, I would just, I would feel horrible. So, granted this may not have been the most scientific test I could have done. The sample pieces could have been a little closer in size and shape. Um, I could have been more accurate with the temperatures up at the forge. There's a variety of things that could have been differently, but this is a real world example. I'm confident that with that temper in the toaster oven, I'm not going to be chipping any blades. And uh, I didn't lose hardly anything on the HRC scale. It really turned out to be almost the same, or at least indistinguishable with just the testing files that I'm using. You know, it's still between the 50 and the 55. Uh, it is going to be my intention to do an interrupted quench yet again with these two knives, the same as I did with the last one. I ended up with a pretty decent temper line. I liked it. Uh, I kind of want a more traditional Hamon line, but I don't want to have to clean the clay off the forged finish. It's just, I think it's going to be nasty and I don't want to do it. But, uh, so the only part that the tempering is really going to be applying to is the hardened edge. It's not going to make any difference in the spine anyways with the way I intend to do those. But uh, anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this little test and uh, I'll probably just stop the video right here. I got a bunch of other things to do. Uh, I spent a bunch of time you know, butchering venison in the middle of this. I'm sorry this took so long to even get this far, but I'll check you guys later.